Ben Goldstein. Welcome to another edition of Tactical Tuesday, brought to you by Israeli Combat Training. I want to thank all of our supporters who have not only commented on Facebook and YouTube, but have also subscribed to our videos, press like on Facebook, which is important, because it's going to allow them to receive these videos twice a week, every week. It's a little bit of training just to get your brain sparked, to get you back into the training mode. That's what we're trying to do here. That's our goal. Today we're going to discuss the draw. The Israeli draw? Not so much. Call this more the Hebrew hammer draw. This is the Ben Goldstein draw. This is a draw that I took somewhat from the Israeli method, somewhat from the American method, and I sprinkled a hell of a lot of logic and statistics and fact into this draw to make it right. What do I mean? It's very simple. We're going to use one hand to draw. What? What? You mean we're not going to bring our hand across our chest, bring our support hand to rip up our shirt while our right hand draws? Nope. Why? Why are we not using both of these claws to draw? Very simple, actually, and it amazes me that people don't think like this. Where do most fights take place in the U.S. of A? Most violent encounters take place, as we all know, statistically speaking, not Goldstein's opinion, statistically speaking, within arm's reach. What does the 21 foot rule dictate? Anybody here who is within the firearms world has heard this over and over ad nauseum. Whether it's 21 feet, 25 feet, 19 feet, doesn't matter. The point is, the old saying, action is always faster than reaction. Who's going to be doing the action and who's going to be reacting? Got news for all of us here. Us as the good people, we're going to almost always be reacting to the actions of bad people. Meaning, you're walking down the street, you're minding your own business, doing your thing, living your life, all of a sudden you come under attack. You didn't choose the time, you didn't choose the place, but they just thrust you into combat, fight for your life. You may not want to be there, but you're there. Now what do you do? Well, you really have two options, three. You can run, nothing wrong with running. You can fight, there's nothing wrong with fighting. Or you could fight using your hands or your pistol. When do you choose what to use when and where? To me, it's a matter of availability and distance. If the threat statistically is already on you, within arm's reach, or within 21 feet, where they can get to you quicker than you can react, quicker than you can draw your pistol from the holster, then you have to use combatives, hand-to-hand -hand combatives. Krav Maga is an excellent choice, so is a lot of other systems. Look in the Krav Maga, the Israeli method is brutal. It's violent, it's fast, it's effective and efficient, and it's logical. You use what your body's going to naturally do under stress, which is what we believe very, very seriously. Now, here you are into attack, they chose the time, they chose the place, and you went to draw your pistol to hand. What do you see? What are you going to hit on me? Here you are, you're the attacker, you're coming towards me, what do you see? I see a head that's wide open for attack. I see a heart, I see a chest. I see no means to defend myself right now with my hands. I also see, more importantly, no means to attack. Because both of my hands are so focused on the gun. Quit focusing on the gun and the gear. Stop it. It's a sickness. It's an industry that's created to make you spend more money instead of investing in quality training time. You can train at home not even spending one penny. You don't have to fire one round of ammunition. You can train your brain. It's the most important weapon that we have. Now, back to the draw. How are we drawing in Israeli combat training? I'm going to rock your world right now. I'm going to show you something you've never seen before. I want you to stand normally. Any day occurrence. You're walking down the street. You're minding your own business. All of a sudden, the attack takes place, and you do have time to draw. Or you don't. Either way, we're going to immediately step to our left if we can step to our left. And I'll show you why next video, why we're stepping to our left if we're right-handed and not to our right. And the idea behind it is so simple and so logical, just like all these ideas. You're standing normally, the attack happens, you bring your support hand up while your gun hand rakes up your shirt. You get a good combat grip on your pistol. You're focusing directly towards the target. What is this hand about to do? Everybody here wants to tell me, oh, you're going to protect yourself against an attack. You're right, but you're wrong. You're right, because of course we're protecting ourselves against the attack, but you're wrong because your mindset is still focused on defending and not attacking. We're going to get you there. 
we're gonna get you there. The left hand comes up, the right hand is ready to draw the pistol, but you don't necessarily have to draw every time. What if the threat coming at you isn't presenting a threat that calls for drawing a firearm? If you draw your gun on that person, you're now facing legal troubles. You don't need legal troubles. You don't need legal troubles. Instead, you're simply getting in position and ready. So now, what can this left hand do? Well, it can do something as simple as say, Stop! Don't come any closer! I scream when I train. Why do I scream? Because I promise you, you come into my group with 12 to 15 people on the training line, and I mean tactical people, all of them, some of them rookies, none of them use their voices. None of them. And the voice is a powerful tool. The voice is something that will stop somebody from coming forward just by using it. So, the left hand is up, it's ready to attack, it's ready to bring somebody behind me, it's ready to use a flashlight, call 911 on the cell phone, police officer, use their radio, open a door, climb a fence, whatever you need it for, it's there. While the whole time your right hand is still on your gun, I've never moved it. I still maintain my combat grip. Now that I'm here on the draw, my left hand can come in to meet my right hand. My right hand and my left hand join in the middle. I can fire effectively and straight from this angle. My trigger finger is already depressing the trigger or removing the slack from the trigger. I am now able to punch out, lock my body in place, squeeze the trigger, and follow up with follow-up shots. Now, let's recap. Why do we believe in bringing up our support hand on the draw with Israeli combat training? And why is it not taught everywhere? I welcome challenge. I welcome discord and I welcome questions. Tell me why you think this draw is logical or not, but use your brain. Don't just say it because somebody told you. Use your brain and think. Develop your own opinions. Develop your own mindset. Don't rely on others. I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope it's informative. I hope you now understand, even on a base level, why we bring up our support hand instead of using two hands. Don't give your attacker more targets than they already have. You're already behind the eight ball by reacting to their action. Instead, let's do movements that will allow us to get to the end zone, to get to the same level of self-offense, not self-defense, than if you weren't even under attack. Every single time you draw your pistol, your support hand comes up, your gun hand rakes up or pulls aside your cover garment, and you're ready to roll. Again, please go online, like our videos on YouTube, subscribe, like our Facebook page, become a little member of what we're offering. Soon we're gonna be releasing a full DVD set that explains the entire core level of Israeli combat training. If logic, efficiency of movement, violence of action, if that all makes sense to you, and the ability to save money doing it, then this is the program for you. If not, I don't want to waste your time, and I certainly don't want to waste mine. But again, please feel free to write questions, and thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. This is Ben Goldstein signing out from another beautiful view in Judea. Just so you know, behind me, you can see Jerusalem, and we are at the highest point in Israel besides the highest mountain up north. Have a great day.